have any questions, like I said, I hope everybody was as excited coming into Lecture 7 um, as, as I wanted you to be because, um, you know, that this is, this is the gold right here of really going and looking at what the chemistry is um, because it gives us this massive amount of control of what we're doing. Like now um, we can put everything in perspective and that's what Glazy does that's so beautiful is it puts everything in perspective. Um, and by having that perspective we can see what works, what doesn't work, um, texture, we're going to get into how this applies to color as we go, um, special effect glazes, high temperature, low temperature, because um, I think, and again, I forget which one, which which video launched today. Yeah, today was the boron one. Today was boron. Okay, so we started to get into temperature, right, 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 right. right. Um, and so, so that becomes a huge deal because Cone 6 is is so inescapable now um, because you know virtually everyone like I, I um I've been doing a workshop at Baltimore Clayworks for the last couple of weeks and the fact that they work at Cone 10 blows me away and the fact that Alfred still works at Cone 10 and um, sort of refuses to sort of give in to the Cone 6 bully which is sort of the way things have come, become now Sylvia I assume you guys still work at Cone 10 because Matt's got some serious porcelain going on historically. Yeah. Um, I think we only, um, my first semester we went to, um, I can't remember if it was like Cone 6 or 06, but it was with um, Earthenware clay to, clay to start off with. So oh, that so. makes sense. Yeah, and that still works. And, and we don't talk a lot about uh, low temperatures in, in this course, but um, I mean it certainly comes up quite a bit. Um, but yeah, that that those low temperature cone O four cone O six um, are, are important. But I but I firmly believe that to understand those, we have to understand um, high temperature, and and to understand boron, which is you know the, as today's lecture, um, you know is, is super duper important. Um, you know the the boron map. Um, you know as I say in the lecture, like. Um, this is probably the, the the single thing that I am most proud of besides my children, um, because this clarifies so many details um, and how temperature really works and what temperature means to us, and also about the universality of stull, which has been the biggest stumbling block. Um, is is really being able to look at stull and then use that to conceptualize texture and use it to conceptualize temperature, um, and and that's a huge huge deal. I actually had a question about um, this graph. Sure. Um, since uh, we focus on cone ten and um, cone six for the uh, for adding boron to lower the melting temperature. Um, mm -hmm. Are there any like issues that might come up um, when you do go lower, like um, for cone O4, um, like food safety or anything else, or are those glazes still perfectly fine? Well, the the whole catch is, um, and I, I will fill you in because uh, Kristen saw this talk of of uh, my talk at Enseca this year um, was talking about applying this same concept to cone O4. Um, and basically the same research that I did here at Cone 6 with the dishwasher and everything I was talking about with that, um, I actually then took all the way down to Cone 04. Um, the short version of the results is the, the flux ratio, that 0.3 to 0.7, is the big deal as far as food safety. Okay, um, As soon as you begin to expand, especially your alkaline metal content, so your, your lithium, sodium, or potassium, when you have too much of those, the glaze becomes physically weak. And actually, when you stop that, step back and think about it, it sort of makes sense. Silicon aluminum are glass formers. They're agnostic as far as chemical durability. As long as they're melting, they're going to be stable. Um, boron is the same. Boron is also a glass former, so it's inherently stable. But if you have too much lithium, sodium, or potassium, the glaze is weak, and it's weak because of a concept called ion exchange. 
Okay, um, and it's a really simple concept, and uh, it's what we were talking about last. Was it last week when we were talking about Gorilla Glass, right? Where you take a brick out of a wall and you put a Lego in its place. Okay, and you do that enough, and the wall becomes weak. And ion exchange is the same thing because, again, the thing to remember about the periodic table is that lithium, sodium, potassium is what we always reference, but it actually goes hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium. And hydrogen is an alkaline metal flux. And to make things worse, acids, um, acetic acid, uh, 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 which is vinegar, uh, uh, citric acid, uh, which is in lemon juice, um, are based in hydrogen. Uh, to make it even worse than that, bases like soap are based in sodium hydroxide, an OH, an oxygen-hydrogen molecule. And so you're getting hydrogen in the form of acids and bases, so lemon and vinegar in your food, base from soaps, because dishwashing soaps are base, basic, um, and so those are attacking your glazes. So if your glazes have too much alkali metal, lithium, sodium, or potassium, they become chemically susceptible to this ion exchange. So, so what I found at Kono 4 is that as long as you keep your flux ratio within the 0.3 to 0.7 ratio, the glaze is exceptionally durable. In fact, what I presented at Inseca this year is that the same way I was talking in today's lecture that, that glazes at cone 6 are stronger than glazes at cone 10 when you use boron properly with a 0.3 to 0.7 flux ratio. At cone 04, with the appropriate amount of boron, they're even stronger than those cone 6 glazes. So that boron just completely strengthens that glass and makes it super robust. Um, and it's actually really cool that you can make glazes stronger by lowering the temperature, um, just by keeping your fluxes set and adding in boron based on this map. Um, and, and so, you know, it, it's it's a huge deal because going back to how people do lower temperature there are only those three ways there are no other magic ways to lower your temperature you're either going to use lower amounts of silicon alumina you're going to use uh, additional alkaline metal fluxes or you're going to use boron those are your three options or a combination of all three and lowering silicon alumina is not realistic and changing your flux ratio makes your glazes physically weak. And when you look at a lot of existing glazes for cone 04 and cone 06, you'll find that they will use one, two, or all three of them, and it makes their chemistry a disaster. Um, but that doesn't have to be the case. You know, what all this research that I'm going on about proves is that you can make completely rugged, durable glazes at cone, whatever cone you want, whatever cone you want at all. Um, you know, I, I haven't tried going beneath 04, but it probably works at least to at least 08 and probably farther, but I haven't tried it. So that's a long way of answering of, yeah, you can do it and the glazes are perfectly strong. Just don't change that flux ratio. Did that answer your question? Yep. I'm still screen sharing that point. Did you have any others? Mm, not right now. Okay. Kristen, do you have any questions? Nope. No? Okay, good. All right. See you guys later. Um, yeah, I mean, you're comfortable with the, the UMF so far? I'm a little behind, but so far oh. what I've done is fine. Yeah. Okay. I've been taking it slow, though. That's okay. You can take it slow. And, and we sort of end up with a few extra days at the end here so you can catch up and um, review. Uh, uh, yeah, I think the last class will end up coming up on the Monday of the last week, if I remember my spacing correctly. Um, so, you know, you'll have the rest of that last week to go back and review. And I think the class stays up. Oh, that's out of. No, on 29. Maybe it's the Friday. I have to go back and look at this before I leave. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, and take your time. It, it, it gets very complex and very um, in the weeds. So I definitely want you to be comfortable with the chemistry and where everything's coming from and, and how things work. The, the things to remember is that flux ratio is not a variable. And a lot of literature will tell you that it's a variable. And now there's some wiggle room. It doesn't have to be exactly literally 0.3 to 0.7. But, um, you know, it needs to be within close to that point. And as soon as you get away from that, especially increasing your R2O to 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, that's when the glazes start to fall apart. And it doesn't matter the temperature. Um, you know, a glaze will fall apart at cone 6, it'll fall apart at cone 04. And if you're using it for food, that's where it becomes dangerous. But, cool. I mean, if you guys don't have any questions, I won't hold you hostage. Nope. Oh, good. Yeah, I think the only other one that I did have um, was answered in that one. And um, I think, it, yeah, lecture 8, about um, if I was wondering if there was a way to um, turn the 4321 glaze into a glaze that doesn't craze. And then, um, but yeah, you answered that one. Uh, well, and, and one thing that I don't talk about, or, or did I? So I have to go back in. Oh, oh, that one I never have the lecture notes. Um, there is one other version of the four three two one that's not yeah that's not in here that is more durable, uh, which is a variation on the four three two one B that we do the calculations on, um, which is actually it's a four three two one but it's a slight variation in the recipe. So what it actually ends up being here, I'll put it in the notes is um, 40 nefsi. Um, and, and here's where it gets a little wacky. You do 30 flint, uh, 20 whiting. I-T-I, if I could spell. And then 10 EPK. Okay. And here, actually, let me pull up the calculator and we can, we can run this one real quick. Uh, so, F whiting, or actually I wanted flint, whiting, and EPK. Okay, let me share this with you. Okay, so with this one, Again, and, and, and this is something that's, that, that I find really helpful to do. If, if you're just sort of wondering how the UMF applies now that this concept's been brought forward and you're sort of tossing it around in your brain, of, of I like to open up the calculator and just start entering formulas that I know or that I might have worked with um, and to see how they work, or just start plugging in numbers. So with this one, we'll do, oops, get the right box. We'll do 40 nefsi. Okay, and again, we get an analysis here of 0.97 to 0.3, so uh, alkali metal to alkali earth, and it's neph size, so it's primarily sodium with some potassium, and then there's silicon alumina. The flint on this one be, uh, becomes 30, but I'm going to skip the flint and do 20 whiting, okay? By doing 20 whiting, we automatically go to 0.3 to 0.7, which is nice and balanced. And again, this is... This is just me putting in the formula. I've got nothing to, you know, I'm not tweaking anything to make this happen. That's just the formula. Um, 30 goes back up to whiting. Um, now we've got a lot of silica, and we put in our 10. Oops, it's not 100. We put in 10 for our clay. Um, and now, again, we've got a balance, 0.3 to 0.7, um, a 3.41 silica, 0.42 alumina, and 8.04 silica, uh, a ratio so if I pull up a version of stull here quickly, um, this one is actually 0 0.42, 3.2. So it's right about here, okay? Right in the middle next to this dot, which is actually, that's my perfect uh, uh, Kono 4, isn't it? Oh, no, that, yeah, that's the, well, that's the glaze I'm referencing. So it's, it's right there, right in the middle of the glossy region, fairly far away from the crazed region. So that's been um, the newer version of 4.3.2.1 that I've been touting since I originally recorded the class. So 40 nefsi, 30 flint, 20 whiting, and 10 EPK. And that should give you inherently less crazing.
Hmm. Yep. Cool beans. Okay, so noon next Wednesday, so it'll be a little bit early for you. It'll be close to my normal meeting time. Uh, and hopefully, yeah, if, if something screws up, like if my internet connection there is bad, just keep an eye on your email. I'll definitely, you know, if, if for some reason I have to pull the plug at the last minute, I'll send you guys an email. Um, Anything yeah. we need to know about the paper? I haven't looked at this since last time. No. It's okay. just, just a couple pages on something. But you picked iron, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Uh, That's great. What is the due date? Yeah, and the class. Oh, okay. All right. Um, I, you know, te technically, I would say that they're due on the last Friday, which is the fifth. But honestly, I'm not back home until Sunday the seventh. All right. Um, I do need them by Sunday the seventh, though, because I have to submit grades on Monday the eighth. Okay. So I have to read everything as soon as I get back. And the final will go up that Wednesday to Friday, and I think it's all multiple choice, to be honest. Um, if I remember it correctly. <laughs> okay. Yep. All right, y'all. Well, next time I see you, I'll be on the other side of the ocean. But I hope everybody has a wonderful week. I'm gonna have yeah, two have screaming. A good trip. Yeah, we'll see if I can survive eight hours on a plane with two small children. Hmm. I'm going to be that guy on the plane. Maybe you guys can all share some sedatives. Yeah, a little Benadryl goes a long way. Mm -hmm. Especially with small people. Well, with this, actually, the cool one is that we've got a little, apparently we've reserved a bassinet for the baby. So, like, we're on the front of one of the sections, like, up against the wall. So they've got this bassinet that, like, hooks up to it. So if he sleeps, he can sleep in there. If he sleeps. <laughs> it's a red eye, though, so like, yeah. Yikes. Well, then everybody will be tired. Maybe. I hope so. We're, we're going to the airport three hours early, and we're just going to let them run like crazy and hopefully exhaust themselves. Um, yeah. Because now the baby started crawling last week, so now that's a nightmare. Oh, my. Yeah. So. <laughs> Good times. Anyway, enough of my boring stories. I'm going to stop the recording here because nobody cares about my personal things.